That was some great, great singing. I have enjoyed watching you sing and praise God. And uh, it's been awesome this week to speak to you. And I'm going to ask you for just, just for a, a little while this morning to give your best attention. All right? And um, I'm looking for a row that I want to give some starbursts to as well. So make sure that uh, you're paying really good attention. Um, Take your Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter 7. And as you're turning to Proverbs chapter 7, I'm going to tell you a quick little story. When I was in 8th grade, uh, the football team that I played on, the Rocket football team or uh, Pop Warner football team that I played on, we got invited to go play a game in Hawaii. Hawaii, isn't that cool? And so we... we uh, we got on a plane. Now, I played on the team. I was a quarterback, and I played defensive back. And my brother, Josh, was the center. He was in sixth grade, but he had to play on our team because he was too heavy to play on any other teams. And so we flew to Hawaii. Now, my brother, Josh, usually he was the one getting in trouble, okay? He was usually the troublemaker. But on this trip, he was helping watch me. Because while we were flying on the airplane on the way to Hawaii, there was this really cute cheerleader. And she told her friend to tell me that she liked me. And so I didn't know who she was, but I'm like, she, she asked, can she sit by you on the airplane ride? So I said, sure. So she switched seats with somebody, and she sat by me, and she talked with me, and and she grabbed my hand, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. I had never held hands with a girl before. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And we're, we, we get into Hawaii, and the whole time, this girl's, like, chasing me. Like, like really chasing me. And my brother Josh, he was telling me, don't you do anything that you shouldn't do. And he said, no sucking face with her. Do you know what that is? You're too young to know what that is. You shouldn't be sucking face with boys if you're a girl, or girls if you're a boy. But uh, he, was, he, was, he was watching me. Well, the very last night before our game, we played our game on a Saturday, and then we flew back home. And the very last night, they had a dance. And my brother, he told me, don't go to the dance. And I'm like, but she's going to be there, and she wants to dance with me. And he just looks at me, and he goes, don't do anything dad wouldn't want you to do. And I'm like, you just ruined all the fun. So he stayed at the house. We were staying in somebody's house. All the, all the uh, players on the team stayed with another te um, family from the other team. And so he stayed and he was going to watch the Rocky movies, you know, the boxer. And I walked to the dance. Now, when I got there, it cost $5 to get in. And I didn't bring my wallet with me. So I didn't have any money. So I should have known, just go home. But I didn't. I said, I, I stood there and I go, oh, I don't have any money. And so this girl, she paid for me to get in. Now I knew that my parents wouldn't want me at the dance. And the only reason I was there is because this girl was really cute. And she was a freshman. And I was in eighth grade. And I thought that was just really cool. And so... I went into the, the dance because she paid for it. And, and she's, she's like, so do you want to dance? I said, well, I've never danced before. She goes, that's all right. We don't need to dance. Come with me. And she started going to go into this really, really dark area where there were no lights. And all I could keep thinking was my stupid brother's face and him going, don't do anything Dad wouldn't want you to do. <laughs> And I turned around and I said, no, I'm not doing this. And I walked back home. The next day, I gave the girl $5 back. And you know what? I was really glad that I had my brother with me to keep me from doing something bad. You know, we don't always have a brother or a sister. We don't always even have a good friend with us to help stop us from doing the things that we shouldn't do. But one thing that we do have is the Holy Spirit. What we do have is Christ in us. We just sang that song in Christ alone. What a great song, because you know what it says? It says that 
we aren't, we aren't uh, people that have to serve our sin anymore. And from life's first, first cry to final death, Jesus commands my destiny. He's with me to help me through life. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says this. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. That is so awesome that when Christ saves you, when you trust him as your Savior, he changes you. And then he doesn't just leave you alone. He gives you the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says that your temple is the Holy, that is your, your body is the temple of God and that the Holy Ghost lives inside of you. That's so awesome. And so we, once we trust Christ, we have the ability to say no to sin. We have the ability to do right. Now, I should have known how to do right all by myself when I was in Hawaii. I got saved when I was in sixth grade. In eighth grade, I'd, I'd been reading my Bible. I knew what God wanted. But sometimes what we know what God wants and what we want to do, they're not the same thing, are they? So let's look here at Romans chapter 7. And uh, the first, the first verse, um, I'm going to read verse 22, and then we're going to look at your memory verse uh, for today. In verse 22, it says, for I delight in the law of God after the inner man. This is really cool. Because the writer of this, his name is the Apostle Paul, because Paul knew Christ as a Savior and he wanted to do right, he says that he delights, he was, what, what brought him the most joy in life, what he got excited about was what God wanted him to do, but it all happened in the inner man, the deep down inside of him. So just think with me for a minute, young ladies and young men. Deep down inside, are you the type of person that wants to do right? Or deep down inside, are you thinking, I wish I could just do those bad things? Because in, in the inner man, in the inward person, we should be delighting in what God wants. Now let's look down a couple verses down from there, verses 24 and 25. This is your memory verse for today. It says, Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to say no to sin, but sometimes I don't want to say no to sin. Do you ever feel like that? Like, you want to do the right thing, but then again, you don't want to do the right thing. This is the power of God inside of you as a Christian. He helps you do the right thing. That's what he wants. See, we have this this body of death. Because of Adam and Eve, they sinned. And so death passes to every person because we all sin. And because of that, we carry around a body that's going to die. Now, look at my body right here. I've got lots of scars on my body. Some of them are from doing some stupid things. Like one time, I was in the weight room, and I was lifting weights, and I was in sixth grade, and I saw these senior girls walking by, and I thought, I'm not lifting enough weights here to impress them. And so I put 45 pounds on each side of the bar, and the bar weighed 45 pounds. That's 135 pounds. I probably at that time didn't even weigh 130 pounds, and I was going to try to military press it just to show off for those girls. And you know what happened? I fell backward. And the bar landed on my head. Boom! The last thing I remembered was the weightlifting coach, Mr. Bender, saying, I can see his skull. I'm like, cool. <laughs> so I got a scar here from being kind of silly, right? For not, for not thinking through that all the way. I've, I've got scars on my body for making silly decisions. And we have some 
some scars that we create in our lives. But you know, the physical scars are a lot easier to handle than the spiritual scars that we make. And you know, in heaven, there's only one person who has scars. Did you know that? Everybody, all of us, when I get to heaven, God's going to heal up the scar right here and the scar I got right here and the scar I got right here and all the scars that I have. I got this scar because in second grade, I was sitting by a girl. Girls are always my problem with scars, all right? So I'm sitting there and, and I got a pop can in my, I don't know why I'm drinking pop in second grade during class, but I was drinking pop and I finished it and I looked over at this girl and I said, do you think I can rip this can in half? And she's like, no. And I'm like, Pfft. Rip, I ripped it in half, and then it cut my finger open, and I had to go get stitches. See, girls, boys, girls are always trouble. But see, all of my scars, all of my eyeballs, all of my scars are going to be healed in heaven. But you know whose scars aren't healed in heaven? Jesus. Let me tell you why. The Bible tells us this. It says that, that Jesus is the lamb who was slain. Remember we talked about the crucifixion and they put a spike through this hand, a nail through that hand, and a nail through that hand, and a nail through his feet, and a spear into his side. Do you know in heaven, he wears those? Two reasons. One, to remind us why we're in heaven. We're there because he loves us. He gave his life for us. I think the second reason is so that God is always reminded that we're all forgiven people. Because you know what? The Bible gives us promises about heaven. Once you're in heaven, you never get kicked out. Once you're in heaven, that you're, you're, you're made one of the pillars in the temple of God. I mean, heaven's such an awesome place. And I can't wait to get there. Well, I can wait because I don't want to die right now. But it's going to be awesome. But you know what, campers? I don't know how long I have from now until I get to heaven. But I want to do my very best for Jesus until I get there. And I hope that you want to do your very best for Jesus. And you, you might be thinking, well, I'm young. I've got lots of time. None of us know how much time we have. None of us do. See, I, I, I have a, I told you I have a big family, and I had an older sister, Jennifer. Jennifer and I were, we were good friends. Uh, when she didn't have a date to her junior uh, prom, I went with her. And I, I remember getting all dressed up, and we're driving there, and we got in an accident on the way. And it was just a little fender bender, and everything was okay. And we got there, and you know what? She was, she was a great friend. When I went to college, she transferred from the college she was going to, and she went to college with me. And we worked at this one place together. We actually had two different jobs that we worked together when we were in college. One place, we were bill collectors, we would call people on the phone that owed money, and we would try to collect that money. And every once in a while, somebody would start cussing and swearing and being mean, and she'd transfer them over to me. And I'd be like, don't talk to her like that. Who are you? I'm her boss. You know, and I'd just yell back at them. But I wanted to protect her. And then we worked at this other place together where we sanded down big um, boat motors. And it was the outside casing for them, and we sanded them down so they could be painted. And, you know, my sister and I, we were really close. Well, when I was 22 years old, and she was just about 24 years old, she was in a car accident. She had graduated from college. She went down to Texas to um, the SIL. It's a school of international linguistics. In fact, I just found out this week that the SIL, when it first started, was here at Camp Siloam. I never knew that before. So cool that it actually two people from here started it and then eventually got moved out over to, uh, to Texas. But uh, my sister, she went there um, and she was, getting a, she was getting a degree 
so that she was prepared to translate the Bible into other languages. And she was, she was really smart when it came to picking up language stuff. She had come, she'd gone from Texas back to Michigan, where we live, and she went back there to make some more money so that she didn't have to be in a, in a, lot, in a lot of debt before she became a missionary. Well, on her way to work one morning, she was in a car accident, and she was killed. And I'll never forget when my dad called me. And he said, Thaddeus, your sister was killed in a car accident. I thought, God, how can this be? She was, a, she was studying to be a missionary. She loved Jesus. She wanted to, to translate the Bible for people who didn't have the Bible. And I'm like, God, how can you do this? And, it, and I really, it, I struggled with it, and I hurt. And, and when our family got together and we had the funeral, and it was just, it was so hard to understand. My mom, she wrote a book. It's called Dear Jennifer. And she wrote it after my sister died. And, and it was one, one of the ways that she was able to work her way through my sister dying. And when she wrote it, she, she put in there all these journal entries. My sister wrote in a journal about every day of her life. She journaled all the time. And so my mom took those and put them in the book and told the stories around what was happening. And... The day that my sister died, she wrote that she wanted her life to bring other people to Jesus. That's what she wanted. And then, that day, she died. There are two ways that we get delivered from this body of death. One is we get to die physically and go to heaven and be with Jesus. The other way is every single day choose to say no to sin and yes to God. Last week I was preaching at a camp and there was a girl there who had heard my story of Jennifer two years ago. And she came up to me and she said, Dad, I'm still on track. She said, I committed my life to be a missionary. I'm going to go to Africa and take Jennifer's place. And I'm like, that is awesome. And now it's been two years and she came and she saw me last week and she said, I'm, I'm still planning on going to Africa. I'm going to go and I'm going to finish the work that your sister never got to do. That is so awesome. And you know what, campers? I want for every single one of you to think about, you know, God can use me to do something really incredible. But you know what? The very first thing we have to figure out is to say yes to Jesus and say no to our sin and to ourself. So let me give you two things I want you to think about. The last two thoughts I'll give you for chapel um, until, well, we'll do a little bit tomorrow morning, but this is the best, last two big thoughts. Number one, live every day as if it were your last. And you live it for Jesus the very best that you can. Some days I wake up and I don't feel good and I'm tired. And one day I had a person that they, they wanted to talk to me and they came into my office and I was feeling sick. And I was like, oh, I don't want to talk to this person because they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And I said, you know what? I'm not living today for myself. I'm living today for Jesus. And so I said, come into my office, talk to me. They sat down and they started talking. And I stopped them and I said, have you ever trusted Jesus as your Savior? And they looked at me and they're like, no. And I said, well, you need to. And they were like, I do. And they prayed right there in my office with me. And I'm like, God, I could have said no. I don't want to talk to you. And you know what it makes me think? Live every day like it's your last day for Jesus. 
because you don't know. Number two, give every part of you to Jesus. See, sometimes we we say, all right, I'm going to give God my life, but he's going to get like 99% of it. I'm going to keep the part that I want to keep. I know uh, for me, for a long time, it was just sports. Oh, man, I, I... if there was a sport playing, I had to have it on the TV. I just, I just like to watch sports. I like to play sports. I still like to play sports, even though I'm getting fat and slow. But I like to play sports still. But you know what? God is more important than that. Some of you, you like to read. Reading is great. But reading's not more important than God. Some of you like to play on your video games. Or you like to watch YouTube videos or, or whatever. You know what? God is more important than all of that. And I want to encourage you, give all of yourself to God. Let's pray here together. Lord God, I thank you so much that you give us the opportunity in life to make decisions. Some decisions are really hard. Sometimes choosing to do right is really hard. But I know that you have given each, each person here that's trusted Jesus, you've given them the power to do right. Jesus Christ gives us the ability to say no to sin and yes to God. And so I pray that every camper here would just think about their life. And if any of them have never trusted Jesus, I pray that right now that they would just Surrender to what you want for them in saving their soul. Lord, we don't know how much time we have, but we have this moment right here. And so, God, I pray that we would use this moment wisely. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, I wonder if any of you young people would say, Thad, I've never trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior, but I want to do that. Today, he will deliver you from the body of death because he'll make sure that you are on your way to heaven. And he he is taking care of the price for your sin on the cross. And tonight he would love to save you. This is the greatest way you could end your week at Camp Siloam is to trust Jesus. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count to three. And if any of you would like to trust Jesus as your Savior, I'm just going to count to three and you can come right up here to the front And stand up here and one of um, your church counselors or one of the staff, they'll meet you and they'll they'll take you and talk to you about trusting Jesus. Don't wait. Don't put it off. So when I count to three, come on up here if you need to trust Jesus. One, two, three. All right, all of you campers can go ahead and look at me. I wonder how many of you campers would, right now, you're, you're sitting there and you're going, boy, it sounds like an awful lot to live every day for Jesus. But you know, if you don't want to live every day for Jesus, you won't. And if you don't want to give everything to Jesus, you won't. And so I'm going to challenge you to dedicate your life to the Lord and say, you know, if you've never dedicated your life to, in, by saying, Lord, I want to give you every part of me, Maybe you've been saved, and, and that, that's awesome. I mean, that's, that's, that's wonderful. You're on your way to heaven. Nothing can ever take that away from you. But if you've never said, you know, God, I want to give you every part of me every day, then I'm going to invite you to come up here, and we're going to have counselors come up here and meet you and pray with you, that you can just dedicate yourself and say, God, I want to give every part of me every day. And so when I count to three, if you want to do that, you can just come right up here. One, two, three.
Then I've got one more question. I wonder if there's any of you here, you're thinking, you know what? I think God might be calling me to be a missionary. I'm thinking God might be calling me to go serve Him with the rest of my life, all the time of my life. And, you know, you, last night, we had some people that said, yes, that's what I want to do. And maybe you didn't do it last night, and tonight you're thinking, yeah, this is, this is something I want to do. I'm just going to count to three, and when I count to three, I'm just going to ask you to just stand up, and I'd like to have someone go and pray with you and talk to you about that decision and, and write that down and make that clear. And so I'm going to count to three, and if God has spoken to your heart about that, just, just stand up. One, two, three. Lord God, I thank you so much for who you are. Because you're a God right now that you're calling to these young people. And you're saying, follow me. And Lord, they're saying right now, Lord, I want to follow you. And I pray that this moment will be etched into their mind. That it will be engraved into their memories. So that they can faithfully and completely follow through. And say, yes, Lord, I will follow you every day. I'll give all of myself every day. Thank you, God, for wanting us to do this. In Jesus' name we pray.